Hi, it's Allie with Infragistics. Today we're gonna to show you how to implement a data-driven testing scenario with Infragistics WPF test automation tools. We'll be using HP's Excel-like data pane to iterate through multiple test cases while reusing the same base code. Let's get started by creating a reusable action. Right-click anywhere on the script and select the menu Action and Call to New Action. This will open a dialog to help define the action. So let's give it a name, select Execute After Current Step and click OK. Next, we will go back to the root action and change the default setting of one iteration to all iterations. This tells UFT that when this run action is called, instead of running it just once, it will instead run once for each row in its corresponding data table from the data tab. Now let's go back to our sub action and start recording. For this demonstration, I'm using a custom sample application stripped from the Infragistic Samples browser. Now, I'm just going to record setting the data for the two cells I am using for this test case. After that's done, let's bring in the data that I'll be using for the test case. I'm going to open the data tab and select our new sub-actions data table and paste in my data. Next, I'll give my data columns meaningful names by double-clicking on the column header and setting the names in the dialog. Now let's create a variable that will access the value from the row column by using the data table method. We'll need to state DT local sheet to let UFT know which data sheet to pull the data from. Similarly, we'll create two additional variables for the cost and units values. Now I can just do a simple replace all of the recorded row portion of the cell identifier with the variable that we just created and change the values that were recorded with the variable from the data table. We can then replace the recorded cell values with the cost and units variables that we created. Next, I'm going to create a variable that gets the current image path for the icon in the units on order cell from our data table. I'll use the get sub item property method that will allow us to access properties directly on the cell. With the image path variable, I can now create a scripted text via an if then statement. Here, I will use the instring method or instr method to determine if the path contains the value from our data table. If the image name wasn't found in the image path, we'll use the reporter object's report event method to report the error to the run results viewer. Let's add a meaningful statement here along with some details so we can determine what went wrong if we see it in the run results viewer. Now let's add one more test, a verification point as we're still recording, we can go to the design menu and select standard checkpoint from the checkpoint submenu. It'll now switch to the hand cursor so that we may select which UI control to use for the verification point. It'll ask us to confirm the control and let's scroll down to the value property. We're going to configure it to use a parameter and define it further with the parameter options button. From this dialog, we will select the current action sheet along with the column that we'll be using for the comparison. Let's click OK. We can now press stop to end our recording and press run to replay our script. As the script replays, we can see it step through and update each row as specified from the data in our data table. With the script complete, let's open the run results viewer. Here you can tell by the green check marks that it passed. By expanding, we can see that it has an entry for each individual iteration of our script. It also shows each individual step inside each iteration, including the verification point. Now let's close the run results viewer and run it again. Behind the scenes, I modified the application that we're testing to simulate getting a new version from our developers. In this version, I changed the conditions for when to show different icons in the units on order column. With the script complete, we can open the run results viewer and look at the results. Here we can see from the red markers that it failed. Expanding it out, we can see which iteration failed and see our custom error message with the details that we provided earlier. This concludes our demonstration of data-driven scripting for Infragistics test automation for HP Unified Functional Testing. And there you have it. In just a few minutes, we successfully implemented a data-driven testing scenario with Infragistics WPF test automation tools. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest from Infragistics, and we'll see you next time.